Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chief John McCarran, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Since my appointment as your Chief of Police on April 15, 2013, not a day has passed that I have not prayed that I would ever have to come before you with the news that I have to present to you today. Many of you have heard me and many other law enforcement leaders say just how demanding the law enforcement profession is on a daily basis. It is only with the prayers and support of the citizens we serve that we can continue to do our jobs. I would also like to offer my sincerest sympathies and condolences to all of the families involved in this incident. I think all of you here today know what a proponent I am of community-oriented policing. In my short two and a half years as your police chief, I believe we have made tremendous strides in community policing. On the night of October 31st, 2015, at approximately 11.50 p.m., Opelika police officer Jared Greer, a three-and-a-half-year veteran, observed a vehicle traveling east on Williamson Avenue. Officer Greer began following the vehicle as it turned southward onto Marvin Parkway. The vehicle then turned onto Crawford Road and later made its way onto Comanche Drive. Officer Greer attempted to stop the vehicle while still on Crawford Road by activating his blue lights and siren. The vehicle continued without yielding to the police vehicle until, until its final stopping place on a private drive just off of Comanche Drive. The driver of the vehicle, later identified as Bernardo Tigner, a 56-year-old male, attempted to enter our residence but was detained by Officer Greer. Mr. Tigner refused to comply with the officer's commands and began to re resist the attempts by the officer to place him under arrest. At some point during the struggle, Mr. Tigner brandished a small caliber pistol. Officer Greer, fearing for his safety, drew his department-issued weapon and fired multiple rounds at Mr. Tigner. The issue presented in this case is whether, at the instant Officer Greer fired his shots that caused the death of Mr. Tigner, he reasonably believed that he was in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or death from the actions of Mr. Tigner. Based on a pre preliminary review of the facts of this case, I believe the actions of Officer Greer were clearly justified under Alabama law. He only used deadly force when it was necessary to defend himself against the imminent threat posed by Mr. Tigner. My preliminary assessment is subject to the outcome of the independent investigation conducted by the State Bureau of Investigation, or the SBI. The basis for the attempted arrest were for traffic offenses committed by Mr. Tigner. Opelika fire and, and paramedics were immediately summoned and arrived on the scene within eight minutes. Mr. Tigner was treated at the scene and transported to East Alabama Medical Center where he was pronounced dead at 12.32 a.m. Mr. Tigner has an extensive criminal record of approximately 20 arrests dating back to 1976. Past arrests include assault, domestic violence, burglary, theft, auto theft, fraud and insufficient fund checks, several DUI offenses and convictions, weapon-related offenses of certain persons forbidden to possess a handgun, menacing, a person commits a crime of menacing if by physical action he intentionally places or attempts to place another person in fear of imminent serious physical injury. Additionally, Mr. Tigner has utilized over 25 different aliases at the time of his prior arrest. 